my awesome artists. This week, we are finishing up our project that we started last week. So last week, we had drawn out in pencil our hot air balloon landscape. So if you remember, we were looking at depth and space, those two words. Do you remember what those mean? If you remember, maybe you could look at your artwork from last week. Mine is all finished, okay? So yours should just be pencil. But if we look at space and depth, we know if something is bigger, it is closer than something that is far away. Here, let's try this in real life. So this hand is closer to the camera, so it's bigger, while this hand is so much smaller, it looks like a baby hand because it is further away. So that what is what depth and space can do. So our piece, we had depth shown in the landscape with all of these hills, the trees, they go from big all the way to super tiny. And same thing with the hot air balloon, big all the way to tiny, depending on how far back it was. This week, we are going to color it in, but I don't really need to show you because it's all up to you. Last week, I showed you how to draw everything in pencil. And so you have what you need to draw already done. You need to figure out what colors you want things, if you want realistic like mine, or if you want to make this landscape in another planet and you have some crazy funky colors going on, that works too. I use crayons, markers, and watercolors for this, but use whatever supplies you have at home and use whatever colors you have at home. Let's get started. I will show you a super sped up version of me doing this because you know how to color it in and you are great artists. So. Let's go. I am going to start off by outlining everything with either black marker, Sharpie, black crayon, black pen, and that really just defines all those lines we did. As you can tell, this is super duper fast, like I said, so you could pause it, Sharpie it, and come back um, and take your time. But I'm going over all of my pencil lines before I add color. As you saw after I was done with the Sharpie, I did go in with an eraser and erase the entire thing to get rid of all of those messy pencil marks. So now it's time to add color and use whatever supplies you have. I did add this little picture of a bunch of different balloons that are really all bright with different designs. So it's up to you on how you'd like your hot air balloons to be. They could all be the same or they could all be different. Remember, the landscape is up to you. If you want this on planet Mars and you want everything to be red and orange, do it. If you want it to be like an underwater hot air balloon scene, it could all be blues and greens. Up to you. But I am using crayons and markers, and I'm going in with all the different shades of green that I have. So I have like the lime green, the dark green, and then the lime green, dark green, and crayons. So now uh, it is time for the sky. I do think watercolor looks best for the sky. It looks the most like a sky or like water. But if you don't have watercolors, you could use that marker trick that I've showed you before where you color marker on a plastic and use a wet brush. I cannot wait to see your landscape. So make sure you take a picture of it. Your picture is straight. It is clear, you have good light in the room, and you submit it in Google Classroom. I hope you had fun. Bye.